Price is another major concern when it comes to the survival of the comic book industry. The comic books being published today are arguably some of the best that have come out in many years, and the talent behind them is top notch. But this quality comes at an increasingly steep cost. Declining sales have forced publishers to increase unit prices on their products to maintain their profit levels. The average comic book costs $3 and contains a mere 22 pages of story, not exactly the best value. And understandably, this turns many potential new readers away from the form. Why buy a comic book when a magazine has over five times the content at a comparable price? As a way of acknowledging this issue, publishers have experimented with specially priced issues of popular comics, such as the Batman and Superman 10-cent adventures and 25-cent issues of Fantastic Four and No More. The first issue of Second Twosome's Fade from Blue was priced at $1, and each issue since has been $1.50. If comics are to branch out of their current situation, a compromise must be reached on prices. If this means a decline in paper or printing quality, then so be it. More people would buy comics if they weren't so costly. This goes hand in hand with making comic books available to more people in the first place. The art presented is far more important than the physical vessel, and if prices continue to increase, nobody will be able to afford to appreciate this art. Creative ownership and control of properties have long been a concern in the comic book industry and will continue to be so. Editorial interference must be kept at a reasonable level. Why hire a writer or, art or artist for a project if you don't respect that person's ability to carry it through? No doubt, editors have a difficult job, but often the boundaries of that job are exceeded and the creative reins are taken from the ones who should really be guiding the story and the final product is diminished. Furthermore, Publishing strategies should focus as much on putting out good, appealing stories as on turning a profit, if not much more so. Comics have a shameful history of creators getting cheated out of the fruits of their labor. The people who had the greatest roles in creating the icons that are immediately recognizable to millions of people were usually the ones who gained the least from them. The work made for hire model employed by Marvel and DC, has become more lenient in recent years. But there is still a long way to go as complete creative control remains a pipe dream. For all the strides the major publishers have made in these regards, there have also been quite a few ill-advised moves that served no purpose but to cause friction between the companies and the creators. The ones who lose the most from these incidents are the readers. Creators can't be expected to tolerate this for long, and in many cases, they don't. Creating comic books for mass consumption is a business, but it is first and foremost an art. When the business interests begin to affect the artistic concerns, both will end up suffering for it, and the negative effects will compound over time. Ensuring creative freedom and protecting creators' rights are the surest ways to ensure that those who are producing excellent comics continue to do so, and that readers will remain interested enough to continue purchasing them.